So I'm in the process of organizing, packing up, moving out, <clears throat> and selling 90% of everything that I own. And this is an interesting period. <laughs> I feel like the most prominent times are the times during my transitions. My lease was only 10 months, but that 10 months flew by and I'm ready to embark on a new journey. <laughs> We're about to dye my hair. <laughs> this is gonna be a two day process. Basically, I'm going to dye the majority of it my natural color and have highlights that are like the brown. It's gonna be something cute, something different. It'll be like more subtle than the styles that I've had in the past for sure. But yeah, I don't know about you guys. Typically for me, I kind of view a lot of my life in these phases and i've said this before like phases of where i live but i've noticed that my hair the color and style of my hair has drastically like said a lot about what period of my life i was in yeah like i started off with of course no hair we're not even gonna go back that far but when i first got my locks installed it was the first day that i moved into my last apartment at the mix and my hair went from super long then i did it where it was half uh brown and then half was my natural hair color i forgot to mention a very important era where i dyed it half blonde and half brown then I cut it all off and went completely blonde for my birthday. And then um, eventually I cut all of my extensions off and had it like very short blonde. And that only lasted for like a few days. And then I dyed it like a brown color, but it was still like something that I was trying to get used to. But anyways, I am ready to pick a new kind of style for my hair and i've really been learning how to do my hair myself i really had oh look at my nails have y'all my nails are so fucking cute yeah i had also gotten an eyebrow piercing last week but i took it out um because it was a very impulsive decision a lot more impulsive than this one so <laughs> i wasn't sure about how i you know how i really felt about doing uh keeping that in um i know a lot of people are probably also curious as to like why I'm leaving the country, even though I'm not really, I, would, I don't understand why people would be curious about it because it's like, obviously, um, this country is um, literally tearing itself apart, surely, for sure. Um, this country fucking sucks. So I have decided to remove myself from it. And um, that's really to make a, make it short. But for me, like, I've always, very much valued um travel i think when i went to costa rica for my first time when i was 17 in 2017 that was a very big that was a very big eye opener for me because i was just like wow like the world is actually this big like your mind can only expand so much unless you really like come face to face with like different kinds of life experiences and traveling really gives me that like not even just to say that like okay i'm going to the netherlands and it's like wow like a whole like like it allows me to understand that the world is so fucking big but even in every other aspect like the culture the food the 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 ambiance the music the the just the, the just everything about being it's somewhere that like you weren't raised to me especially out of the country has just always been like a very eye-opening experience and i i i i view myself as a person who don't give a fuck but like when i'm traveling when i'm not in the country i don't care at all like you are not reaching me unless i want to be reached if somebody asks me if i want to do something yes yes i do yes let's go out to eat let's go to this club let's go ride this boat let's go to this beach like i just feel limitless and like i've said before every time i've come back to america it's always been because i was people pleasing for somebody else 
literally when I was in Hawaii for my 21st birthday last year, my uncle called me and um, on the phone and he was just like, you know, like, happy birthday, Trin, like, you know, just a regular conversation. He was like, you know, like, what's going on? What are you doing for your birthday? And I was like, oh, yeah, like, I'm in Hawaii right now. Like, we're about to go skydiving. Like, I'm really living it up. Like, I love it here. Like, I think I might come around and stay. And he was like, hell no, you can't stay. Like, what you mean you finna stay? Nah, Trin, like, you better get your ass back on that flight to Atlanta. Remind you, this man has been incarcerated for almost 10 years now. I think it's been over 10 years. Yeah, and I'm, I'm hopeful, I'm praying that he gets out soon. But it was just like, people really will speak fear over all your plans and not understand that they are the ones in the wrong. Okay, so right now I am about to buy my plane ticket. So originally I was thinking about starting off in Panama just because um, I've been to Panama before. There's of course so much more Panama that I have to see. And uh, of course I wanna learn Spanish. So I wanna dedicate like a month at max to that wherever i go first oh jesus christ words uh it's just so like buying the flight is gonna make it even more real and it's something that i've been putting off it i've been putting it off a little bit because i know when i book a flight therefore planning has to come um and i've kind of just been flowing this be the hardest well i don't even want to say it's hard but this be the part where i'm just like okay like having to prepare myself you know um but once i'm there like it's very so much more easier to just like kick back and just be so yes anyway i think that i am actually going to go to mexico city mexico it's just a new city i've never been to mexico city um and i know that everything that i want to do in panama i can do it here and it's just like I could sit here and decide in a, in five minutes to go to Costa Rica instead and it still wouldn't matter. <laughs> so um, yeah, I have like no itinerary. I'm just going wherever I feel called. I found the flight that I'm going to choose. It is for Tuesday, September 13th. And I'm buying me a one-way flight to Mexico, bitch. <laughs> okay. Okay, we just click complete purchase. It's taking a while to load. Oh my God, I'm so excited. It's crazy because literally when I was, uh, I found the flight and I was like, okay, I'm gonna do this flight. I clicked on the link, it took me to Delta's website and literally it had pulled up the page where it was like, you know, where I put in my card information and just look over all the information. And I looked at my phone and it was 1111. It was 1111 and I was like, okay, okay spirit, okay spirit. Hey, this is the last update, I swear to God. And then I'm done. This is so fucking cool. So I just, um, uh, the place that I am going to stay for the night in Cancun, and I'm about to show it to you guys. This shit is so cool. It is a capsule hotel. Yeah, this is it. So it's like a, it's like a capsule hotel. This shit's so fucking cool. And it's literally so cheap for the night and it's gonna be perfect. I'm excited. <laughs> okay, so this is the update for the living room starting to look pretty empty we got rid of the rug sold the rug and the entertainment center so those items are over there and i went shopping a little bit a lot of this is for donation and for sale um and i'm trying to like lay out my clothes to see like you know i'm bringing things that can really be mitch matched together mitch matched <laughs> together and so yeah just bought these jeans from Urban Outfitters. And I really wanna be wearing like a lot of boho stuff, like these pants that I love and wear often. And one bikini, only one. Some really interchangeable tops that stand out. I have a lot of white tops, so all of my white tops will be able to go with all of my pants. And um, I wanted to put some more color in my closet, so I got this really cute blue top. 
and these are some more baggy pants with some nice like i don't know fabric some flowy fabric this is like a cute little going out outfit i absolutely absolutely love this top from urban outfitters um these are some leather pants that like i said are for going out i am aware that i was out of my mind when i thought about packing these leather pants just want everyone to know that i am no longer bringing them i know mexico city is hot as hell and um yeah i'm an american so i feel like that showed in this scene <laughs> then these are some um overalls that i got from etsy they're pretty baggy they're given exactly what it is they need to give and then this outfit is also something that will be taken into consideration as i am just doing my travels and shit so i just got these shorts from target they're cute and um yeah other stuff we're really really just getting shit together cleaning doing all that stuff <laughs> so the dude who's getting the couch just stopped by to check it out and um we're about to say goodbye to the good old ye old sofa guys the couch is gone y'all my fucking couch gone like this shit is so real but you know shit real when the couch gone so today it is saturday i am getting ready to go to a pop-up shop in atlanta i wanted to express further feelings about this whole transition process. I've been very excited, very eager, very, but um, that doesn't mean that there is not fear. Like fear was creeping in um, yesterday for sure. And it's been a little bit ever, kind of ever since I bought the, the, well, no, not ever since I bought the plane ticket, but definitely after I had to get the Airbnb that I'll be staying in for the first two weeks, the the fear was like open up <laughs> like um and i feel like i need to talk it through um because i've been talking about it to you know my friends and stuff like that but yeah so um i don't know i feel like for me personally typically i don't really look scared um, and it's been like that for a while. I remember my ex-girlfriend and my mom used to just be in awe about the way that like I would just say shit or just like get on stage and just say shit or, you know, just expose my talents in ways that were not very conventional and would take a lot of guts pretty much. And I mean, I've always been a very blunt person, very bold person at that as well, but um, I think that my thing is just because I'm doing something does not mean that I'm not scared, but best believe I'm not going to let you know that I'm scared. So that's been my logic for a while because people think I'm just not afraid of shit. And it's like, I do be, but it's just like what sometimes like, it, like if I'm being judged by an audience of peers where it's like, all right, I got to get on stage. Clearly, I don't want the judges to know I'm fucking scared. But, um, you know, like when it comes to conversations like this, I think it's a service to express all emotions that are surrounding this, everything that this video is even talking about. And I feel like I'm kind of feeling the way that I felt last year because literally this time last year, I was in Panama, like in Panama, experiencing shit on my own. And um, if you haven't seen that video, you should definitely check it out. Um, Cause that was a fun experience and I loved every moment of it. And it was just something so different and so unique. And, um, but I wasn't ready to, I wasn't meant to stay there like, long term like i came back for a reason played out another year in atlanta and now i'm i'm now i'm ready to embark on a um abroad a journey abroad so 
Yeah, but I'm at the same time, I'm just like, I don't need to be afraid because honestly, what exactly does fear do? Like, I was I was asking my friend that question last night because I'm just like, why exactly do we fear? We fear because we want to be in control, but it's like, what exactly are we trying to be in control of? In control of the experience. So like me being afraid of, of I guess, traveling the world would, I guess, uh, t basically would be my tactic in uh, helping me be in control. Because it's like, if I'm afraid of shit, then I'm thinking about every possible thing that could happen. I'm really just going to proceed with understanding the fact that I create my own reality. The other day, let me tell y'all about something that I manifested. So of course I'm dwindling down my closet and um, really like putting things in storage, selling a lot of stuff and understanding what it is that I really do want to take with me for the sake of convenience and just, you know, um, having as little as possible, um, but things that I need. And so something that I've been really wanting to try is uh, period panties. And so like I've tried every kind of menstrual product like pads, tampons, um, the Diva Cup, um, just other shit like that. But I've never tried period panties and I liked the Diva Cup, but you, there's no, I'm still trying to figure out how to shove it in there correctly. And now I got nails, so that's not working. Um, but anyway, for the past like month and some change, I've been doing research to try and find which period panties I'm going to get for my journeys. The uh, Yesterday, literally yesterday, I was DM'd by a black owned um, menstrual, organic, ethically made menstrual company. And they basically just DM'd me and was like, hey, we wanna send you some products. We believe that everybody should, you know, have uh, their best period possible or, you know, something like that. And I was like, bro, if that ain't the universe, <laughs> just providing, just providing, just things that you wouldn't even think twice about. Like I wasn't even actively manifesting. I guess I was, cause I, they had been on my mind for a while, but I wasn't even actively like, you know, doing it the way that TikTok tells us that we're supposed to manifest or what the fuck ever. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that was just a prime example of me literally just existing and creating my own reality through some very casual shit. So um, they're gonna send me the period panties and it's like, that same logic applies to everything else because it's like when I was stressing about money, like money has found its way to me now. Like when I I was stressing about money and then I turn around and get a brand deal from this brand that I've been salivating over, which was the brand that I was sponsored by in my last video. Um, and that was a great partnership and I'm so eager to work with them again in the future. Like it's just like, I don't want to succumb to fear because what is the point exactly? Like um, a, a part of me uh, really likes to like have control over situations for the sake of fear. It's solely for the sake of me being afraid of something not going the way that I want it to. But it's like me trying to hold on to like that kind of energy or just occurrence of events really limits the possibility of like something even better that I didn't expect coming in. I have some spiritual retreats coming up. We are going to Mexico in um, January of 2023. And then we are going to Morocco in March of 2023. And I'll leave all the information in the description box because that is going to be such a it's gonna be such a fun trip. We have a little group chat on Instagram that I just started where we're all getting to know each other, all the people that are coming. On the Morocco trip, there are six spots available. And on the um, Mexico trip, we have like over 10 spots available. And it's like, I'm about to be in Mexico, so I'm gonna be able to even show y'all a lot more of it because I'm about to just really be out there experiencing it. So, yeah. <laughs>
I'm about to put y'all on. These vacuum storage bags are from fucking Dollar Tree. A dollar twenty-five for these. If you are moving, if you are going to college, if you just putting shit in storage, bro, on my life. And I'm about to package all this stuff just so y'all can see how good these vacuum seal bags are. Okay, so I'm high right now. <laughs> Um, you know, it's been a lot going about in the energy, the collective. So I was like, shit, I'm alone. <laughs> End of an era. Get high for one last time. Like it. <laughs> Hell no. Nah. And like, I'm watching the Vampire Diaries. <laughs> And it's so funny because like, it's, it, I never seen it originally when it first came out. And I started this shit in early August. And I'm like, and I think my thing is, cause I normally watch cartoons like Rick and Morty. I don't be like, like this is like something that you like are following along. This is like, this is reminding me of Pretty Little Liars. Now I was in that bitch for Pretty Little Liars. That shit was so fucking hard to me, bruh. I mean the ending, I don't know about that shit, that shit was, kind of disappointed but just seeing the progression of oh my god these bitches is just out here wilding like bro that shit was so vivid and like i was like a book head like a book head book nerd i was like a book nerd so and so to see pretty little liars like play out i kind of forgot and i thought about rewatching that shit but I knew it was gonna be something that I would have to dedicate my time and energy to. And so when I got high as fuck earlier this month and I was by myself again, I was like, man, I'm scrolling down Netflix trying to see what to watch. And The Vampire Diaries is on my list and it's been on my list for years. And so I click on this shit and that shit say expiring September 3rd. It was like August 1st. And I was like, damn, like, I could just turn this shit on, <laughs> not thinking that like, it's gonna probably suck you in. And I'm, cause I, every season I've just been like, I'm still watching another episode. Like, why am I still watching this shit? <laughs> like, why am I still watching this shit? And then I'm just talking shit about it the whole time and I'm like, man, that shit gonna go off on September 3rd, so I'm gonna have to stop watching it eventually. <laughs> and then when that shit finally went off on uh, Netflix, was looking around like, hold on, wait, I gotta find this shit on some other platform. <laughs> and the day they took it off Netflix, they added it onto HBO Max. And I was like, we in this bitch. <laughs> because I'm looking at this shit. And bro, when they got to the part with like Klaus and shit, that's a weird ass name. When we got when we got to that part, I was like, bro, I don't like this nigga. Like, I don't like this plot. Like, I want him to stop being a factor. And the moment this nigga stops being a factor, we're like roped into another big villain that we have to be looking out for now. Like, <laughs> I know I'm making 100% sense right now. I know I'm making 100% sense. Cause I could sit here and be like, I'm high rambling and shit, but no, I'm making fucking sense. Klaus left and then some bullshit happened with all these damn characters. There's always some shit going on with everybody. No one's ever just chilling. It's just so funny to me because I'm like, damn, this is like, this is like a story. <laughs> this is a long ass story. Anyway, that shit was just funny because I'm like, I've been looking at shit like so full circle. Like I, the way that my vision is, like if I meet somebody and it's like, for one, of course, you meet somebody and you automatically, the first thing you see is what they look like. And therefore your brain just immediately starts to perceive them as something. Basically the way that I have been seeing people is like, of course, brain first perceives them for the way that they look and shit like that. And then it's it's inevitable. Like we do it. Typically when I see people I am like drawn to, I'll like say something based on like, you know, their response. And like, if we start speaking and shit, 
shit like that. It's like my brain has been recently really, it's building my intuition pretty much. But my brain is like, it's them in the middle. And it's like, it's like a little percentage like loader. And so it's them in my brain is like, calculating more and more based on like the new senses that i'm given by this person so first visually to um verbally and then like other shit like then you can smell a person like and then it's like <gasps> even more of a a percentage loader and but for me i'm saying that based that's like you know real kind of mundane shit but for me it's like i'd be able to tell a lot about an individual not an individual, a member of the collective. <laughs> now I've been able to look at people and I did this with Trey the other day. Like, and this was my first time and I've known Trey for months, but this is my first time being able to see like his inner child in him. Like really as, not as Trey, grown ass man, <laughs> Trey, but like six year old Trey. Like, and I was like, whoa, I see it. I see it because I literally was saying in my last video and in my last podcast episode that like I feel like everybody has that one moment in life that just like hit our subconscious in the worst way possible in the worst way possible and it's like that moment right there is exactly when everything changed exactly when everything I have a very big trauma like that got quite a few but um, my life, I look on, I look at it as like a certain timeline and you know, it's like, for me, it's like, oh, the shit was like rough and spiky up here. And then sometimes it was, it was barely surviving below, I mean, above depression and escaping to books like this fucking show full circle. Cause it's like, this shit is literally reminding me. It's literally, it's literally like a comfort sh uh, show for me right now. But anyway, yeah, my intuition has been growing, 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 growing. And I'm grateful that it's growing so much to where like I am actually able to like navigate based on my tuition, like my intuition. Like this shit is cool as fuck. Oh, another thing, another thing that I had to mention was like, even with, I hope y'all know this show, like, if you don't, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's like, I, this bitch is like in love with Damon. <laughs> Bro, oh, that's what I was saying before. Cause I'm like, looking at this show, I'm really seeing these niggas full circle. Like even before we seen Klaus's whole backstory and shit, I was like, this nigga's hurt. This nigga's deep, has a deeply wounded inner child. Like, I don't know what the fuck was wrong with that shit, but it, it's just so obvious to me. And it's like, y'all are letting too much shit slide. It's just like, ugh, niggas is just switching up so much. And it's like, I'm now I'm about to have to watch this character become every single type of character version of themselves that they could possibly be. So it's like, ain't none of these niggas the same as how it first started. We just had three high school girls just girling. And now these bitches done got serious. These bitches done got angry. These bitches done tapped into their ancestral line. And it's like, it's like, okay, I guess that's what you get in an eight season series. Is really what I'm trying to say. Cause this shit long as hell. Like, so little update, little update um today was a very busy day um moved out a lot of stuff into storage by the helps of so many beautiful beings and i feel so full of love and gratitude that so many people came to help me out today and yes so i uh i just feel so happy that so many people swung by to just provide me with an act of service and help me um, with moving out. I had people that I barely even knew like that come over here. One shawty from, I met at North Carolina A&T back when I went to college. 
came over here and helped. And I'm just like, wow, like, I didn't realize how much I did love acts of service. I feel like, cause I don't really receive acts of service that often. Earlier I was lying in bed and I watched my last like sunset. And it's so interesting, the emotions that I'm having. Alexa, turn on the AC. Because I remember this time last year, as in like late July, cause that was when I was moving out of my first apartment. I felt this just dread of this just big question mark, this unknowing, like of just like what was to come. I was dreading it because it was just so much like uncertainty within myself as well. And like, I have uncertainty about this journey I'm about to go on, but I am certain in the fact that I bought a one-way fucking ticket and I got an Airbnb for two weeks and I'm going wherever I feel called to go after that. And at this point in my life, that is as much security as I need. That is as much certainty as I need because I know for a fact the universe shall provide. And that's the fucking truth. The universe will provide and provide and provide again. And literally, I just spent the past like hour and a half with my friend Y, who I haven't seen in like months. Shadi is full of knowledge, full of infinite wisdom. And we was just in here talking, catching up, really reflecting on how much, how we experience the same things at the same time, which is very interesting because like, I ain't never met nobody that get it like her. And it's funny because I was talking about her in my last video too. Yeah, and it's like, I know for a fact, I plan to document this journey of me in Mexico, which I am, but I know for a fact, y'all niggas are not about to be able to find me, bro. Like, <laughs> I'm about to be out of this bitch. Like, niggas was surprised when I said that I was leaving the country. I'm like, what are you surprised for? How are you surprised? How are you surprised? Like, this world is, it's tearing itself apart. Like, I get on Twitter, like, me and AB was just always talking about, like, crazy shit that we be seeing. And one of the things was, um, fairly recently, she was telling me about some niggas, some niggas with a podcast, some white people, some white guys with, some pod with a podcast, and these niggas prop up in the middle of a park with mics, and they just have opinions. And it's like, I'm not even saying like they're bad. I, I don't know the context of the podcast, but we were just talking about the simple fact and what it is. Like everything just looked pretty fake. Like it's cool that like everybody can be famous and shit, that's fine. But it's like the the type of fame that people are trying to uphold, like I can't get, I can't get jiggy with it. Like <laughs> I can't get down with that shit. Like, I don't like niggas who just spew opinions and they just think that like everybody is just like, like, no, you should not exist like this. Like, nigga, what? What the fuck did my queer ass do to you? Like, what? Like, why are you talking to me out of your motherhood trauma? Like, I'm hearing this shit. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing this shit full circle, bro. People are dense. People are very dense and it's like, but they're also deep as fuck at the same time. But it's like, yo, if your conscious mind is dense, I can't really help you. Yeah. Bro, this shit is so fickle. Everything is so fucking fickle and I don't understand. I was like, how the fuck are people just driving to work? Like niggas is just driving to work. <laughs> like Niggas is just driving to work. Like it just don't, it just don't make sense to me, bro. It just don't make sense to me. Like, I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that, and you know that episode of SpongeBob where Sp uh, Spencer, Squidward, finally gets like his dream house, and it's in a community with niggas that look like him and think like him and talk like him, and, and at first it's great, and everyone's just, he's just doing the normal shit, going to his Pilates, fucking clarinet, painting, like, but then it's like, Okay, like, 
Niggas, and that's heaven. Like, niggas think, <laughs> oh, God. Like, I'm in here spitting, but I feel like the message is just going to, niggas is like, this is not the video that I thought I was clicking on. That I know for a fact when I get out of here, like, my sense of self completely alters so aggressively when I am traveling. It's just something about traveling that just, it just hits the fucking spot. That shit is just like, I knew I was not of that place. Like, <laughs> wherever I came from, nigga, like, that shit was cool. Like, it did resonate. It did resonate for a while. It did. And it was great. And I, I developed and I embraced that moment and everything was great. And it was just such a fun time. But I'm about to find that fun time somewhere else with new people, new place, new like, just new shit, new shit. And that's so fucking exciting to me. I'm tired. It's empty. <laughs> This is where I'm gonna end the video because it's been a long time coming and I feel like when y'all see this video, I'll probably be on the plane, if not about to get on the plane. <laughs> so thank you guys for tuning in to this episode. Well, this episode, what the fuck? Thank you for tuning in to this YouTube video. I'm very excited for what is to come. I'm very appreciative and very grateful for the fact that I've been able to live such a very dope and interesting life. A lot of people find my life very interesting and I cannot blame them. Like, this shit is crazy. <laughs> but um, I, other than that, I don't have much to say. I'm going to cry myself to sleep because my body is in pain. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, same as always. And you guys will see me in the next video.